Here is a problem from your book. When 40 people used the Weight Watchers diet for one year, their mean weight loss was 3 pounds and the standard deviation was 4.9 pounds. Use a .01 level of significance to test the claim that the mean weight loss is greater than zero. Now, we've already been answering questions like this for the last couple of weeks. What makes this question different is now that you're asked to test a claim, which means we need to write this in terms of a null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Remember, I gave you the hints that the null and alternative hypothesis will always include claims based on a population. And what we're told here, and I'm going to go back and underline anything that deals with a sample. I know 40 people are my sample, and the sample size was 40, the sample mean was 3.0, uh, 3 and the standard deviation was 4.9. That all has to do with the sample that I took. And I want to use that sample to test the claim about a population. And it looks like the population, I want to test that the mean weight loss is greater than zero. So I want to use my sample, what's in blue, to test the claim that this diet works for all. So what I'm going to do is since I can see here the mean weight loss is greater than zero, that's essentially the claim I want to test. But we know with the alternative hypothesis, we don't have, or excuse me, the null hypothesis, we don't include values other than equality. So let's just say and assume that the mean weight loss is zero. Let's say the mean is zero. That's usually what we do in the null hypothesis, is we just assume what they're saying, there's no change. We just assume it's zero, and the alternative, we're assume it's greater than zero. We really want to just, we're, we're focused on the alternative, the mean weight loss is greater than zero, but we can't put that in the null hypothesis. We have to write that in the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the place for equality. We're going to say the mean is equal to zero. So what am I asking here? Well, I need to find the test statistic and the critical value. That is given to me. I'm told that the mean, excuse me, the level of significance is 0 0.1. This is a right tail test. Right tail because I'm talking about a mean greater than zero. So here is my critical value that I'm looking for. And I know with a level of significance of 0 0.01, that's the area to the right of this critical value. So this is my critical value. And I want to compare my critical value with my test statistic. So the mean's in the middle. And I'm looking for the critical value that has 0.01 above it. The question is, am I going to be looking in the T table or the Z table? The difference, and we know we're going to be using actually the T table, and I know that because I am not given, the standard deviation of the population is not known. So I'm going to look up the critical value. I'm going to look up the T score, if you will, that separates the upper 1% from the lower 99%. So in my T table, I'm going to be looking up it's going to have a tail of 0.01 in one tail, just in one tail. And the degrees of freedom, well, the degrees of freedom is going to be one less than our sample size. And since our sample size is 40, that means our degrees of freedom are 39. So, in your textbook, you can look up in the table A3, 39 degrees of freedom, we have the area in one tail to be um, 2.426. Now be careful that you're reading that correctly. The tail uh, for 0.01 in one tail is the second column in the table. The area in one tail, 0.01. Okay. So this is our critical value. What we want to do is we want to compare this critical value to our test statistic. We know that if anything, any test statistics that lie outside of 2.426, if they lie outside of 2.426, then they're in this place, right? So here's our critical value, 2.426. This is the difference between the lower 99% and the upper 1%.
if our test statistic, if we find based on our sample that our test statistic falls beyond 2.426 and in this zone, then we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Okay? We will reject the null hypothesis and, and say there's evidence to support the alternative. So what we want to do is using our sample information, we want to calculate the test statistic. In other words, if we're assuming the null to be true, then how unlikely that for how unlikely is it that 40 people had a weight loss of 3 with a standard deviation of 4.9 given that we're assuming that 0 was the mean the population mean what's the probability of this occurring essentially what's the probability of this occurring given that the mean was 0 if it's very small if we look at the p value if it's very small then we're going to reject so we can look at it at the critical value or we can look at it with a p value so the test statistic, we're going to be using everything in the sample, 40 people, standard deviation of 4.9, and a mean of 3. I know the test statistic, so I'm going to abbreviate that TS, will be equal to X bar minus mu divided by the standard deviation, which is that itself divided by the square root of N. So X bar, that is the sample mean, that was 3, 3.0 minus mu, that was claimed to be the population mean, that's zero, divided by the standard deviation of our sample. Notice I don't know the standard deviation of the population. If I knew that, I first of all wouldn't be using the t-score. And then the number of people in our survey, our sample is 40. Okay. So up top I'll have three. Okay, let me erase that real quick. So up top I'll have three, and to make this a little easier, I'm just going to round that denominator. So I'll have 4.9 divided by the square root of 40, and I'm going to round this to four decimal points, or four decimal places, 7748, 7748. If you can put this whole thing in your calculator, that's great. Um, I know... That's kind of a hassle if we're using just a scientific calculator. So let's just do the numerator to get 3. We'll do this in our calculator. And I got four decimal points, four decimal places, excuse me, 0.7748. So now when I do that, 3 divided by 0.7748, I get 3.872. So what does that tell us? That's our test statistic. 3.872 is our test statistic. And that is telling us that we are lying outside of the mean by a value of 3.872 standard deviations. You can kind of think of that. So a 40 people standard deviation of 4.9 mean of 30 or 3. If this value right here was 2.4 2.6, right? This value right here was 2.426. Our value is 3.872. That's in here. 3.872. That's beyond. It's beyond 2.426. So what we would say, right? This green region we know is the rejection region. Well, reject what? Reject the null. So since our test statistic lies in the rejection region. There is evidence to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. In other words, there is evidence to support the claim that the mean might be greater than zero. Okay? We're not going to say it's true, it's always true, but there's evidence to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. Okay? So what did we do real quick? When I looked at this problem, I deciphered between the information that was from my sample, and I took that away from the claim about a population. I know the null and alternative hypothesis will always contain information about the population. They're not going to include anything about my sample. So I didn't put the mean equal to 3. I was testing the claim about the population that it was greater than 0. The null hypothesis is always equal. Sometimes you will see 
less than or equal to, but we're just going to stick to equal to. And the claim that I was looking for was the mean was greater than, so that's my alternative. I drew a picture. I know the level of significance is 0.01, so I drew, this is a right tail test, I drew 0.01 in the right tail. I found the critical value, the t-score, that has 0.01 to the right with 39 degrees of freedom, that was 2.426. I then, using my sample information, I calculated my test statistic, and I found that 3.872 was in that rejection region. It was further away from our mean than the 2.426. Therefore, I can reject the null hypothesis. There is evidence to reject. Therefore, there appears to be evidence to support the claim that the mean is greater than zero because we're not going with the null, right? The null was rejected. That doesn't say that the alternative is true, but there's evidence to support this over that the mean is zero.